In this lecture, we're going to discuss the concept known as eddy currents. Now, eddy currents are essentially a result of electromagnetic induction, as we'll see in just a moment. So, let's suppose we have the following metal disc that is rotating about an axis of rotation, and it's rotating in a counterclockwise direction as shown by the following two arrows. Now we apply an external magnetic field B to a small circular region of space as shown in the following diagram. So we apply our external magnetic field which is uniform and which points into the board as shown by the following blue arrows, by the following blue axis. So essentially as our disk is rotating, it's rotating through the following region that has a uniform external magnetic field. Now let's suppose we choose position 1 and we choose position 2. When this point is at this location at position 1, the magnetic flux at this point is 0. And that's because our magnetic field at position 1 is 0. Recall that magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of the magnetic field and our area A when our magnetic field is assumed to be uniform. So at position A there is no magnetic flux on this point of our rotating disk. But when our point moves to position 2, what happens is now there is a magnetic flux because we have an area and we also have a uniform magnetic field B. So we see when our disk rotates from position 1 to position 2, there is an increase in magnetic flux. Now recall, we know from Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, whenever there is a change in magnetic flux, that will induce an EMF. So that means, as our disk rotates through this region that has a magnetic field, there is an EMF that is induced within that region. And that EMF will in turn induce an electric current that will flow through that region. Now, those electric currents are known as eddy currents. And by uh, Lenz's law, we can determine the direction of those electric currents. So, once again, as position 1 moves to position 2, the magnetic flux increases. Now, by Lenz's law, the induced current in the disk will create a magnetic field that will oppose the change in magnetic flux. Remember, whenever there is an increase in magnetic flux, the induced magnetic field will point in the opposite direction compared to our external magnetic field. So therefore, the induced magnetic field will point out of the board. So in the opposite direction of the external initial magnetic field B that creates that induced electric current. Now, by right-hand rule number one, the induced current will point in a counterclockwise direction as shown in the following diagram. So, to apply right-hand rule number one, we essentially orient our fingers, we curl our fingers so that they come out of the board as shown by the following motion. We extend the thumb and the thumb will create the following electric current that will point in a counterclockwise direction. And this induced electric current is known as an eddy current. So, this induced electric current known as the eddy current will feel a magnetic force as a result of the external magnetic field. Remember, whenever we have an electric current moving within an external magnetic field, that external magnetic field will create a magnetic force on that moving current. And that means this external magnetic field given by the axis will create a magnetic force on our electric current, on our eddy current. Now, by right-hand rule number two, the force will point to the left.
So right hand rule number two tells us that we take our right hand and we extend it in the same direction as the motion of our eddy current. So at this point, it points up, then we curl our fingers in the direction of our external magnetic field, which is into the board. We extend our thumb and the thumb points in the direction of our magnetic force. So that means by right hand rule number two, the force will point to the left as shown in the following diagram. This is our magnetic force. Now this magnetic force will create a torque that will point in the opposite direction of the initial torque that creates that rotation. So our initial torque points in the counterclockwise direction as shown, but this force will create a torque that points in the clockwise direction and that will oppose this initial torque. Now this will in turn slow the rotation of our motion. So these eddy currents are essentially induced electric currents that feel a force as a result of this magnetic field and that force will create a torque that impedes the motion, the rotational motion of our object. So let's examine one application by looking at the following simple pendulum. So let's suppose we have the following sphere that is a metal sphere, so it's a conducting sphere, and we initially raise it to a location where there is no magnetic field. So we raise it to this location and then we let go it will begin to oscillate back and forth. It will begin to travel. Now notice initially when it enters our magnetic field, as we saw in this region when our disc rotates from point one to point two, there will be an increase in our magnetic flux. And that basically means we're going to have an eddy current that will feel a force, a magnetic force, that points in the opposite direction of the velocity, of the motion. And that force will impede the motion of our simple pendulum. Likewise, when it continues traveling, we see that when it enters this location, when it goes from our magnetic field region to no magnetic field region, there is a decrease in our magnetic flux. And that basically means that instead of being counterclockwise, our direction of the current of the eddy current will be in the clockwise direction and so our force will point in the following direction. If we use right hand number two, right hand rule number two, we see the force points in this direction. And that implies that as our pendulum, as our bob is moving back and forth, because of the presence of this magnetic field and because this is a conducting object, the eddy currents will essentially act to create a force that will oppose the force that creates the motion. And so that means eventually our bob will slow down. So once again, when a conducting pendulum enters a magnetic field, the eddy currents will feel a force that will oppose the motion. As a result, the pendulum will eventually come to a complete stop.